Welcome to the Late Late Show. We hope you had a wonderful day. Thank you for staying up late with us tonight. We have a fun show. Here we'll be speaking with the always brilliant Alison Bree. Then later on we're chatting with philosopher and best-selling author Yuval Noah Harari. I'm excited about this. Not often we have a philosopher on the show, is it, guys? Hey, baby. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in love with him. I'm just oh, tell you right now. He's such a great dude. He's the coolest. I know. Do you remember he came back? He came on right at the start of the pandemic. Yeah. Made us all feel a bit lighter. I'm excited to speak to him. How do you become a philosopher? <laughs> like, how does that happen? You, you never see like an ad in the back of a paper, like philosopher needed. Yeah. Twenty-two to thirty-five thousand dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do, you, is it just, do you just spend a lot of the day saying stuff and people go, that's actually pretty smart. You should, <laughs> yeah. you should, do, this, you should do this for a living. Right, but how? I don't know. I just, is it a thing? Com a lot of companies need philosophers. Like, you're, you're like at Boeing and they're like, we built the plane. And they're like, but did you? <laughs> <laughs> is that it, do you think? That's what, that's what you consider philosophy to be. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> but, but do I? Mm. Mm. Do I consider that to be philosophy? I wonder if that would be a good turn for me when all this is done. No. Yeah. Get him, don't be so fast. <laughs> I love I you. I said he goes to a no. I think I'd be all right at philosophy if I change my hair. I think it's my hair is the issue. This is not a philosopher's haircut. No, it is not. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. This is the haircut of a, a sort of a 14 year old who's on the sidelines of a soccer team. That's. <laughs> But it begs the question, it begs the question, why are we eating these orange slices? <laughs> Again, I, d I think it is out of your reach, but I do feel <laughs> like I could... I do think I might be able to do it, you know? Yeah. Maybe I really commit to it. Because also, who can prove you wrong? Oh, what do you do for a living? I'm a philosopher. Are you? And you just go, no, oh, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or any of us. Anyway, fancy a drink. <laughs> Let's get into some news. <laughs> President Trump is still lashing out at anything and everything related to the election. Yesterday, he even fired a top cyber security chief, Chris Krebs, for calling the election, quote, the most secure in American history. Unfortunately, this president is the least secure in American history. <laughs> takedown. Just witness the takedown. <laughs> he never recover from that now. That's right. Trump said that Chris Krebs' statement was highly inaccurate. And I have to say, genuinely, Chris Krebs didn't deserve to be fired. Chris Krebs did his job. And Chris Krebs is being treated unfairly. I love saying Chris Krebs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what... <laughs> it's not a joke. I just really love saying Chris Krebs. Yeah. What a great name. Chris Krebs. <laughs> hey, Chris Krebs, how you doing? <laughs> That Chris guy, Krebs. That guy yeah, never says, hey, I'm Chris. That's, no. a, that's a full name every time. Chris Krebs. Chris Krebs. Sounds like a game you'd play in a, in a yard at school. You want a game of Chris Krebs? I've got some chalk. <laughs> ah, I can't, man. I hurt my ankle playing Chris Krebs yesterday. <laughs> it's hard to know who to trust here. Chris Krebs. <laughs> Chris Krebs. I love that, um, that band, Chris Krebs. Amazing. Used to wear their clothes backwards, do you remember? Yep. <laughs> I do remember that. You know, you should know better. Jump, jump, the yeah. Mac Dad, I'll make you... Yeah, Chris Krabs. Chris Krabs will make you jump, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Chris Krabs, I'll make you... How high, real high. Cause have you listened to that song recently? Still slaps. Yeah. Absolute banger. Anyway. <laughs> Hard to know who to trust here. Chris Krebs was head of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency within the Department of Homeland Security. But remember, Trump once touched a glowing orb. <laughs> this is crazy. Trump clearly only wants to be surrounded by yes-men, which I think is ridiculous. Don't you think, Ian? You're the best in the biz, Corden. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Don't you think that's right, Steve? Of course it is. It's madness, right, Tim? Yeah, uh, it's crazy, yeah. Right, Hagar? To just have your employees completely agree with you all the time? Madness. Don't you think, Guillermo? No. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking more and more likely that we're going to get wide access to a coronavirus vaccine in the next few months. And according to reports, Trump is furious because he thinks Joe Biden will get all of the credit for it. At least he's focused on what's important right now. <laughs> Look, you have to...
to give credit where credit's due, and it's definitely not due to the guy who said that all of this would disappear by Easter. <laughs> I mean, this is what Trump's worried about. Who gets the glory for a vaccine? It's like when someone opens a jar of pickles and you're like, yeah, well, I loosened it. <laughs> Which is something I do. <laughs> According to reports, Trump's mood has become increasingly bleak to the point that he's even decided to cancel his annual Thanksgiving dinner at Mar-a-Lago and stay at the White House instead. So we know there's at least one racist grandpa who won't be showing up to Thanksgiving this year. <laughs> Trump's locked himself away. He's alone in his room, sulking. He's not traveling for Thanksgiving. For once in his life, he's actually being COVID safe. <laughs> Trump's so upset, those two turkeys the president usually pardons have gone straight to the electric chair. <laughs> Trump's aides have described his mood as bleak. It's bleak, and you can tell that just by looking at him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. What do we think? I mean, what do we think Trump's going to do on his, like, last day in the White House? What sort of damage is he going to do, Ian? I, I don't know if this is so much a, like, last day of school thing, and this is going to be more like the slow erosion of being disgusting over four years. Right. It's like the Grand Canyon, but of, like, couches they're going to have to throw away. Yeah, I mean, what's he, what do you think he'll do in there? What will he do, Reg? I think he's going to, like, put, plant a bunch of whoopee cushions. Um, he's going to, like, loosen the nails on some of the, the, the pictures. I'd love it if he did. You know, and just, like, gag it out, you know? I just... I'd lo I, don't think he, I don't think that's in his... I don't think that's his vibe. But I do feel <laughs> like that is the sort of stuff that the President of the United States should do to that. I'm so sick of reading all these people on Twitter going, well, this is the letter that Bush left for Obama or Clinton or whatever. Like, no, you're right. Whoopi cushion, whoopee cushion. Yeah. Just, Cling just... film, saran wrap over the toilet. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. Just like a <laughs> nuclear football that when you hit launch, it sprays like water in your face, like that kind of thing. All of that sort of stuff. That's not exactly what it needs. A single laugh in here today, and I don't know if it's that the hoodie zipped up too far. <laughs> Or if I like shampoo <laughs> condition, I have, I have not bombed this hard since I did stand up still, and that's been since <laughs> April. I don't know. It's it's difficult. I think you had such a big show yesterday. Yeah. That was the thing. You had you had you had you had Kid Rock. You had some great bits. And I think you've come in absolutely dripping and nothing. 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 Just try something else, see if it flies. Can't sink, sink a single jumper in here. Just oh. try one more, try one more. What's he gonna do, Ian? Why well, is what I've been thinking? What? <laughs> What's Trump gonna do, Ian, on his last day in the, in the White House? I don't know what Trump's gonna do, but I'll tell you what my ex-wife did. <laughs> <laughs> He's back! I'm back! And did you guys see this? Ivanka Trump's former best friend has just written a tell-all essay about their relationship. And in it, she claims that she once recommended a book to Ivanka, who responded, quote, Why would you tell me to read a book about <laughs> poor people? <laughs> when she heard about the essay, Ivanka responded, This isn't true. We love poor people in our house. Almost every morning, Jared eats one for breakfast. <laughs> You know, here's my thing about this, right? I was reading this story. What kind of person writes this story with one month left of the Trump administration, you know? As a general rule, I don't trust anyone who claims to have or be an ex-best friend. <laughs> Immediately, that's a very specific type of person. Do you know what I mean? Who uses the words ex-best friend? Like, my ex-best friend, Trisha, was always, like, hogging the jello shots. She's a total bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've unfollowed her. <laughs> By the way, the book about poor people Ivanka's friend was recommending was this one. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, a large supermarket chain is now apologizing after they ran an insensitive ad encouraging people to host Thanksgiving gatherings. The ad says, hosting, plan a super spread. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's a very insensitive ad campaign. But a solid joke. <laughs> like, I think it's okay to be, to be disappointed in the campaign, but acknowledge 
Solid joke. <laughs> you know what I call that ad? Viral marketing. <laughs> can we see it again? I mean, can you imagine eating orange slices when you've got a giant shrimp platter and a perfectly good cheese board? <laughs> And we wanted to show you this. A company in Canada is getting a lot of attention online for its sign encouraging people to wear a mask because, well, you'll see it when you see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sorry, I, I can't hear. I've got, I've got a penis in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talk about graphic design. <laughs> right? It's a play on words. To play on words. Should we see the sign again? Look at that. That's a guy you do not want to be around if he sneezes. <laughs> Come on, Susan, did you only just see it? It came up the second time and all I heard was Susan go, oh! <laughs> How did you not see it, Susan? He's got a giant <laughs> in his ear. <laughs> I say giant I consider it an average penis, but... Uh... <laughs> And finally, we talked about this yesterday, and now we've got an update. Do you remember when we told you about the Pope's official Instagram account, how it liked a photo of a Brazilian bikini model? Well, here's the picture that the Pope liked here. That's the picture. Well, the Vatican has now launched an, in an investigation into the incident, saying, quote, an internal probe is underway. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> I mean, imagine putting out a press release. Did no one at the Vatican go, guys, I know that we have to respond publicly about this, but maybe we shouldn't use the phrase internal probe. <laughs> <laughs> the Vatican says that they're going to look very closely at it. Very closely. Like, for a long time. <laughs> but it looks like HBO is already capitalising on the incident. They just announced this new show for the spring, The Horny Pope. <laughs> 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 